YouTube, Christian Prepper Gal here. And today I'm going to take you along with me while I make some powdered butter packets. And I am back. I have the counter cleaned off and all the items that I need here um, for us to reconstitute this powdered butter in the packet. Okay, first thing, remember we put a slit in there, so I'm just going to tear it open. See how easy that works? And I've got, I'm actually going to try a teaspoon. I've never tried this before, so you are witnessing and experimenting with me on this. But I'm, I'm going to use a teaspoon of water to put in here, and we'll see how that works. So, and I'm going to pour it right into the packet. And I'm going to squeeze it all together to mix it up. It keeps wanting to come out. <laughs> I'm going to bend this down so it doesn't keep trying to come out. There were no videos on YouTube or any instructions anywhere for me on how to do this. So I'm learning along with you. One of the things I did note on the uh, can that holds the powdered butter is that it wasn't, there were no directions for a single tablespoon. It was uh, more for uh, like one stick of margarine size or, you know, that type of thing, and a couple of recipes. So this is a total experiment. I'm letting it sit for just a moment so it can kind of gel up or whatever it does, harden a little. It's not going to be hard. It's going to be like a soft, spreadable butter. Now I'm going to squeeze it out into this bowl and see what we have. Squeeze as much of it out as I can. Now my thought for this on the camping or in a bug out situation would be this would be great to spread on uh, bannock bread or biscuits that you cook in camping and things like that. It would make a great spread and it is actually butter. It's not a butter substitute. Okay, so there you can see that's like little, it's like a little bit of butter spread. I think that was a good combination for reconstituting it. The reason I'm only doing one tablespoon, because a lot of times you're going to need more than one tablespoon, but I figure that way you can open up more than one packet that you need, as opposed to putting larger amounts in a packet and only using a smaller portion of it and wasting it. So um, I'm all about trying not to waste things and <laughs> utilize everything I can. In fact, there's a little bit more there. I'm going to squeeze that out a little bit too. So... So you just, you know, you want to go ahead and whatever works for you for the amount. But it ended up being about a tablespoon of the butter powder to a teaspoon of water. So if you were going to do two tablespoons of the butter powder, you do two teaspoons of water. Just that little bit that doesn't want to come out. Okay, so if you want to stick around... I'm going to clear this space off and come back and show you how to put um, the leftover or remaining powdered butter into the canning jars and to seal it up so that it will continue to last up to 10 years in the storage. So I will be right back. 
and here I am back again um, to show you how to store the once opened can of the powdered butter. One thing I noticed I forgot to do when we mixed up the uh, powdered butter and reconstituted it, I forgot to tell you how good it tastes. So I'm going to take just a little bit right now. Just give it a little taste and let you know how it tastes. So here goes. Mmm. Oh my. That is so silky. And it tastes to me just like butter. Not margarine that most of us buy in the store. But butter. Pure butter. Oh, that's good. Mmm. Mmm. Okay, I don't want to put that spoon back in to contaminate it. All right, so I have already put some of the powdered butter into the jar, and I'm going to shake it around so I can get a little bit more in. And bloopers. Okay. Let me adjust the camera just a little bit. Not that much. Okay, I'm going to call that good. And let my lid go. Set this out of the way for a moment. And then I'm going to show you how we're going to vacuum seal it so that we can put it in the pantry and it'll last us up to that up to 10 years in the pantry first of all i gotta wipe off any and all powder that's around the top of the jar so that we can get that perfect seal then i'm going to put the lid on i'll put I'm not going to put the ring over top yet. <laughs> I'm going to plug in my vacuum sealer. And I have a lid attachment and the, I don't know, it's not a cord, but whatever it is you call it that comes with it. And it's attached to the vacuum sealer. So now I'm just going to set this over top that lid. And on my vacuum sealer, it has a, uh, setting for canister so I'm gonna go ahead and press that it's gonna get louder but if you really listen you can hear as it's sucking out that air um, you can tell a difference in the sound so give it a listen all right and that's all there is to that. Then we just need to remove the lid. Whoops. I need to release the pressure by pulling this off. Listen for the pop. Did you hear that? The air released? Now I can pull the lid off. And this is on there nice and tight. It sucked out all the air and it's keeping it out. And the, the jar lid is pressed down just like it does when you're canning. And everything is uh, airtight in there. So then we put the ring on. And that is ready to go into the pantry and store. If you don't have a vacuum sealer, you can buy the oxygen absorbers and they'll do basically the same thing they'll draw out or they'll absorb excuse me all of the oxygen that's in the jar you just place one of those in these are 300 cc's so you just place one of these in the jar put the lid on put the ring on and it'll take it a while but um, probably about half an hour or so but then it'll seal up too just like this so Okay, there you have it. If you have any questions, feel free to um, write them in the comments below. 
and um, I'm just trying to think if there's anything else I wanted to go over with you. If there is, I will add it either at the end of the video or down in the comments below. So thank you for hanging out and doing this little experiment with me. And I will see you next time. Until then, happy prepping and God bless. Hey, I had to come back. I just remembered something that I did forget, and that is to make sure you use a marker, a Sharpie, and write the date on your lid so that you'll know um, to check it in, like I would say, maybe seven years to make sure it's still sealed. I, I check mine quite regularly to make sure they're still sealed, probably once a week or so because I'm so par paranoid about it. So, okay, that's it. See you next time.